Hello and good morning everyone or good afternoon or good evening uh, whatever time you may be watching this um, you know it's uh, you know I, I say the same thing over and over in my videos but it's just me that's hearing my same voice saying it over and over uh, so because every video you know you watch it at different dates and different times so maybe it's just me because I do a recording uh, I try to do a recording every day so I get tired of myself saying good morning or good evening or good afternoon you know but uh you know, when I started to think about it, you know, I'm like, well, you know, it's not that bad. It's not that bad because, you know, usually don't people don't uh, binge watch my videos. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so at all. So anyhow, good morning. My name is David. Just in case you're watching this for the first time, uh, my video for the first time, uh, you know, I, I like to say my name. Uh, those who have been following along, you're probably saying, we know your name is David and you always say this. <laughs> okay, so anyhow, I'm saying it again. Uh, it's nice to meet you if you haven't uh, been following along and you're watching this for the first time. Um, I'm your, uh, if you're a believer, I'm your fellow brother in Christ Jesus. Amen. And, uh, and I'm just glad you're here watching. And, and uh, so um, anyhow, uh, we got, uh, I, like I said, uh, we got an eclipse, a picture of an eclipse, okay, and it's beautiful. And see, this is a; these are real pictures. This is a live picture, not a live picture, but it's a real picture of an eclipse. Uh, like I said, whenever eclipses come, people pull out their their cameras and their 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 cameras that could take pictures, you know, out of space, and they're just uh, just you know and they take pictures you know and and, and uh every time there's a big uh, eclipse coming you know everybody announces it and and people try to get to the places where they could find the best shot so these are real pictures i don't know who took these pictures i don't know the person who took these pictures but uh it's an awesome picture and like i said there's always uh there's darkness you see the darkness okay that okay well we got the eclipse going but you see the light shining from in back you know of the picture you know right here the shimmering light right here uh, right here another uh, picture of the shimmering light and all around you see the ray of light of the glow that's all around so that is a uh, you know sometimes they say these these uh, you know and like I was saying from the Talmud you know they're saying these e eclipses uh, represent um, you know the 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 chastisement of those who are who are worshiping uh, idols you know and uh and so it was like a bad omen if there was an eclipse you know and uh so but there's also another another commentary that makes a comment saying that you know uh, there's other scriptures and i won't take you there now but there's other scriptures saying that there's hope you know there's hope in these eclipses you know because whenever we have a celestial disturbance something major going on in the in the heavens or in the galaxies or whatnot it's something that the lord is trying to convey or just uh showing himself okay so very awesome picture um very awesome picture so like i said today we're going to continue uh, in the book of ezekiel on this uh on this uh, journey through the major and minor prophets uh ezekiel chapter 18 um verse 1 Okay, but before that, um, what was I, I was going to say something. Mm, yes, I was going to pray. <laughs> I was going to pray. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for yet another day, another hour or so that uh, we're going to be spending in your word, Lord. And I just ask that you would uh, just continue to keep me focused, Lord, Father God, and and uh, just continue to use me as your vessel, Holy Spirit, that whoever watches this, whoever listens, may you open up their eyes and their ears. May you give them understanding if they don't have understanding yet or if they're trying to figure things out. If they're just learning, Lord, Father God, um, just give them, give them understanding like you've been giving me understanding. For you are our teacher, Holy Spirit. You give us understanding of what you want to speak to us through your word, Lord. So I just pray this upon anybody who's learning, who might be learning, and even those who already have understanding. May you bless them. May this be a blessing to them. Uh, for reading your word every day is just a blessing. And so uh, I just pray for those who are watching and listening. I pray a special blessing over them. May they receive 
what you are speaking to them, Lord, and may be for the reason of spreading your good news, your gospel, Lord, Father God. May you give them the courage to uh, speak your name to others, Lord, for your name is powerful, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Uh, just uh, allow them to, to preach the good news of your return, Lord, Father God, and, and uh, the full gospel, Lord. Just give them courage <clears throat> to make disciples wherever they go, wherever they go, whether it be in a laundromat, whether it be anywhere they may be walking in their work or their office or whatever it may be. May you give them the courage to speak your truth, Lord, Father God, uh, to a friend, to a co-worker, uh, to family, Lord. Uh, just give them that courage, Lord. And, uh, and uh, for that's why you teach us. That's why you show us these things. That's why you speak to us to, uh, to be able to... Um, to um, share your good news, Lord. So thank you. Thank you once again, Father. Uh, continue to give me a, a concentration, Lord. Continue to speak through me, Holy Spirit. Uh, and we pray all these things in your mighty and precious name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, our Lord, God, and Savior. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Okay, so um without further ado <laughs> we're going to start in uh, chapter 18 verse 1 this chapter uh is actually very very uh, I, I i enjoyed it very much going over it again um, there's a lot of lessons to be learned here uh, we could apply it till today uh, we always could apply something in the word of god uh, to our day amen and uh so i'm going to begin now uh, in verse one okay um it says the the title right here is the justice of a righteous god it says then another message came to me from the lord it says why do you quote this proverb concerning the land of israel the parents have eaten sour grapes but their children's mouths pucker at the taste as surely as i live says the lord you will not quote this proverb any more in Israel, for all. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, verse four: For all people are mine to judge, both parents and children alike, and this is my rule: the person who sins is the one who will die. So, straight out right there, the Lord is saying, you know, he's he's saying, uh, for all people are mine. All people, what's that? Only only Israelites? Only No, all people are his to judge. Every single human being, okay, is his to judge, okay? Both parents and children alike, okay? And this is his rule, okay? The person who sins is the one who will die because they had this proverb going on. They're saying the parents have eaten sour grapes, but their children mouths pucker at the taste. In other words, they're both affected by it, okay? Uh, it, it goes on to explain what, what he means by this proverb, okay? It says, suppose a certain man is righteous and does what is right and does not feast in the mountains. Hold on. Suppose a certain man is righteous and does what is right and, and just and right. He does not feast in the mountains before Israel's idols or worship them. He does not commit adultery or have intercourse with a woman during her menstrual period. He is a merciful creditor, not keeping the items given as security by poor debtors. He does not rob the poor, but instead gives food to the hungry and provides clothes for the needy. He grants loans without interest, stays away from injustice, is honest and fair when judging others and faithfully obeys my decrees and regulations. Anyone who does these things is just and will surely live, says the Sovereign Lord. Okay, so like I said, we can apply this to, to today, and it doesn't matter because we know we have been grafted into the Commonwealth of Israel. So we know we've been grafted in, so we can apply this to ourselves today. Okay, now, this part where it says, uh, suppose a certain man is righteous and does what is just and right. First of all, a righteous man, a believer, okay, does what is just and right. Okay, first of all, there's lessons to be learned. When we're living our life, okay, we must always do a spiritual check on ourselves. We always must do what is just and what is right. 
in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. He does not feast in the mountains before Israel's idols. Okay, now we know, okay, that this is speaking of when they're worshiping, uh, physically worshiping idols in the mountains. Okay, physically, uh, physic, uh, physically worshiping false gods uh, and idols. Okay, so now that doesn't apply to us, but remember we're to what we're talking about, idols. Okay, idols in our life. Okay, remember that in the other videos we we're talking about. So to a certain degree, we must not worship those idols that we anything that we put before God amen anything that we put before God okay that takes all of our time that takes all of our anything that we don't we put we can apply ourselves okay we can apply ourselves to certain things okay your work your job but if you're not putting God before that before all of that and, and worshiping him first, putting, remember the priorities I was talking about, okay, so there's good lessons to be learned here, okay, so it says, uh, uh, he does not commit adultery, another one, that's a biggie, okay, or have intercourse with a woman during her menstrual period, there's, there's certain, uh, um, um, the laws and decrees in his word that's why you want to go through the, the 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 torah okay of the laws that he put down you just must go through them at least you go through them and you see which ones that apply to you today and those that you can do you know of course we don't live in israel okay we don't those for the most part don't live in israel okay and this wouldn't apply to you but just go through those laws and say, okay, well, I could keep that one. I could keep that one. Well, I don't own no oxen or I don't own no animals. So this doesn't really refer to me because it goes on in detail of all the different uh, uh, animals. If an animal is killed, okay, and, and, and whatnot, it goes into a lot of them. But those things, okay, well, they don't apply to us because of where and when we live. Okay, if we live in a city, of course, we don't, we don't have an oxen that lives next door. And if it falls, in a ditch or whatever i'm just you know paraphrasing but just apply the ones that you can apply to yourself okay and uh, we know for sure we we uh we go with the ten commandments amen and uh even those you know sometimes we can't we can't uh keep every single one because our thoughts and that's why we have uh, uh, uh our lord that completed and that fulfilled okay the commandments that fulfilled the law to the t every single part of it he fulfilled prophecy okay and uh we could be rest assured that he knows that we're trying okay and that we love his law we love his law we didn't dismiss and say it's gone now okay we love his law and we're trying our best to keep it okay and then he knows this and then so if our minds drift off or if a fiery dart comes in and you lust okay that's one of the big ones okay you lust in your brain okay so then you could go before the lord our our high priest uh, that that uh, you know it's excellent to read the book of Hebrews because he is our high priest. Okay, we don't need to go uh, uh, sacrifice an animal. We don't need to go once uh, once a year to go up for your sins to be uh, 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 forgiven by an animal sacrifice. We don't have to do that no more. We have uh, the Lamb that was slain. Okay, that gave his life for our sins. We have him as our high priest. Okay, he tore the veil. Okay, we could go in. 24 7 and 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 ask him to help us in those things that we are are are, are fighting or or we're wrestling with in our in our own walk with him okay and we could go before the lord and those thoughts that come into your head because he says even if you look upon a woman uh, with lust okay you've already committed adultery okay so um we go if that happens okay to you then you go to him in prayer you know you say lord man my mind went here i'm sorry and he's just to forgive Give you remember it's always about your heart it's always about your heart he knows your heart okay so if he knows sincerely that you you feel that you got convicted of something that you might have done or or you slipped or whatever and you come to him he knows your heart okay he knows your heart he knows you're not taking advantage of him and okay he knows us okay he knows our intentions he knows our thoughts before we think them so uh it's it's a sanctification it, it comes in time okay so um just remember we got a a loving god a loving savior that loves us very much amen okay so it says so uh, so uh, suppose a certain man is righteous and does what is just and right he does not feast 
in the mountains before Israel's idols or worship them. He does not commit adultery or have intercourse with a woman during her menstrual period. He is a merciful creditor, not keeping the items given as security by poor debtors. He does not rob the poor, but instead gives food to the hungry and provides clothes for the needy. He grants loans without interest, stays away from injustice, is honest and fair when judging others, and faithfully obeys my decrees, there we go, and faithfully obeys my decrees and regulations. Anyone who does these things is just and will surely live, says the Sovereign Lord. Now, there's controversy here. There is among, amongst believers. You know, and, and I, don't, I don't understand why. I really don't. When it says clearly right here, and faithfully obeys my decrees and regulations, okay, where does it say, you know, I, I, really, wanted, I really want to know, where does it say that when Jesus came, okay, he fulfilled the law. Yes, he did. He fulfilled Torah to the T. He did that for us. Yes, he did. I, I truly understand that. But where does it say that you do not have to obey his decrees and regulations no more because he did that for us? That you can be saved and sin up a storm, continue in your sin, not repent, okay? And not love his laws and not obey his decrees and regulations. Where does it say that? It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. You know, his laws and decrees are there. Now, now what I, I just went through that right now. Okay, now, because you break a little bit of law, is it going to send you to hell? No. Okay, that's what we have them there for, to be our, our to, to go to, okay, if, if we screw up or if we slip, okay, if we're having problems or something, he is there, he's, he's fair and he's just to forgive us of those sins, amen? But we must... Uh, um, we must look at his decrees and regulations. Uh, King David spoke about them very much in the book of Psalms. King David Jesus said, I love your decrees. I love your laws. Okay, I love your laws. And who is he talking to? He's talking to the Lord. He says, I love your laws. I enjoy them. I enjoy your statutes. I, en I enjoy your decrees. Okay, so what changed? What changed, you know? And, and I just don't get it because... They are good. They are fair. His laws are fair and they're just. You know, without his laws, what would it be like? You know? And so, amen to that. I just, I don't see it. I don't see people saying, well, I can do whatever I want to do and still be saved. I don't see it. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. So, it says, uh, he grants loans without interest. Okay. So, uh, so many good points here that we could look at in this one this one verse right here this one paragraph okay we could learn from this amen so it says uh it says anyone who does these things is just and will surely live says the sovereign lord okay so it says but suppose but suppose that a man uh, but suppose that man okay has a son who grows up to be a robber or murderer and refuses to do what is right. And that son does all the evil things his father would never do. He worships idols on the mountains, commits adultery, oppresses the poor and helpless, steals from debtors by refusing to let them redeem their security, worships idols, commits detestable sins, and lends money at excessive interest. Boy, there's, that goes on a lot. Ooh. Should uh, such a sinful person live? No, he must die and must take full blame. So remember, go through this. Go through this paragraph and say, okay, then we line ourselves up. You know, if, if you're a business owner, anything like that, and you're a believer, uh, you know, you got you to gotta look at these things, okay, because uh, there's a lot of this going on in the world today, okay? So it says, uh, but suppose that man has a son, okay, who grows up to be a robber 
or a murderer and refuses to do his right. Rebellious kids, rebellious son. And that son does all the evil things his father would never do. Okay, so it goes on. Okay, we already read that. So it says, oppresses the poor and helpless, steals from debtors by refusing to let them redeem their security, worships idols, commits detestable sins, and lends money at excessive interest. So, so, uh, should such a sinful person live? No, you know, I, I, that comes to mind. Okay, why, why did I read that over? We understand what it's saying. Okay, uh, it's black and white. But there was one time um, I was in a I was in a bind. I was really in a bind. Um, I had it was just I lost my job. Just things weren't going right, and uh, and I had I had a car, and you know I I never would put you know dare to put any uh, get a loan on my car. I owned it, you know, at at that time, and and uh, and then so I said, you know what, I'm gonna. I need to pay. I need to pay my rent where I was living. So I'm, I'm going to get this loan, you know, and um, this loan ended up being like, I don't know how much interest. It was like a hundred and it's, I don't even know how it can be that much of an interest, but it's like a hundred and something percent interest, you know, and it was just extreme, extreme, extreme. It was one of those places where they take your title and they uh, they actually um, they lend you money on your on your vehicle, and uh, they hold your title and and uh, it was just it was just extreme it was extreme and uh, uh, but the with the with the owner it wasn't the owner it was actually he worked there and he was a believer and uh, they did give me a break because I it, I really couldn't get it back and and uh, I think they ended up giving me a break but I had to come up with a certain amount of money in a few days and. It was just extreme. It was over 100%. So that's, and lends money at excessive interest. I mean, that that alone just, just it, it's not correct, you know, but it happens a lot. Okay, anyhow, anyhow, let's, let's continue. Okay, uh, verse 14, but suppose that sinful son in turn has a son who sees his father's wickedness and decides against that kind of life. This son refuses to worship idols on the mountains and does not commit adultery. He does not exploit the poor, but instead is fair to debtors and does not rob them. He gives food to the hungry and provides clothes for the needy. He helps the poor. He does not lend money at interest and obeys all my regulations and decrees. Such a person will not die because of his father's sins. He will surely live. But the father will die for his, for his many sins, for being cruel, robbing people, and doing what is clearly wrong among his people. Now you see what that proverb that they were saying, that proverb that we read in the first paragraph of, uh, of the beginning of this chapter, that's what it means, okay? It means that can a son die say if the dad is wicked okay and he's he's uh he's just well he's all these things he's he's a murderer he's just living wickedly and then he has a son okay and then and then should his son be blamed for and his son is a good son okay because this happens a lot a good son and his father's wicked okay so should that son okay a believer uh be 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 killed or, or go or, or lose lose uh well die in other words uh um, lose salvation i guess you could say or or go to hell <laughs> that's another another way to put it uh should the son have to suffer okay death because of his dad or should he have to suffer for the sins of his dad no if his son is wicked and the dad is righteous, okay, should the dad have to suffer uh, um, um, uh, on on uh, behalf of his son being wicked? No, of course not. So that doesn't apply. Now, there's there there was a person who once told me, and I don't I I don't know if it's I I don't know this is what I mean because I think it's in scripture but I'm not positive. And this is where I'm not positive about something. Uh, but it says, uh, but the person, a believer told me, 
Uh, well, you know what? I'm not even going to mention it because I'm not sure about it. So I'm not going to I'm not going to mention it. OK, but it had to do with uh, uh, your family. If you're a believer and they're and they are not a believer or they're not um they're not born again, okay? If you're family, okay? But they're covered because you are. Okay, now you get where I'm coming from? Okay, so say say a person is a believer and his wife is not and his kids are not or whatever and they're not born again and the wife's not a believer. Okay, are they covered because the the father, the, the, the husband is a believer? Okay, so that that that's what it had to pertain to. Now, um, I, I don't believe so. I really don't believe so. I, I truly, I truly, if, if you guys know, let me know, okay? Um, but I truly, I would hope so. I, I really do. If I could be uh, the believer in my family, you know, if I could be the believer, the born again believer in my family, uh, and, and all my family saved, like every single one of them, I mean, my immediate family, okay? Uh, I don't think it goes like that. Really, I don't. But if that's possible, that would be awesome because I would have no problem. I would be like, oh, oh, my dad, er everybody, everybody saved, you know, my children, everybody saved, you know, because I am born again. OK, all my family are saved. OK, that would be so awesome. Right. But I, don't, I really do not believe it's biblical. OK, but another believer told me that. Uh, so um, if you guys think that that's correct let me know I, I i really don't think so um so anyhow um uh, that's kind of that i'm not going out of context here because that's kind of what we're 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 reading right now okay so i'm gonna uh go ahead and and uh read that again uh that 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 uh paragraph but suppose that sinful son okay now i'm gonna go ahead and, and continue in 14 it says, suppose that sinful son in turn has a son. Okay, but suppose that sinful son in turn has a son who sees his father's wickedness and decides against that kind of life. This son refuses to worship idols on the mountains and does not commit adultery. He does not exploit the poor, but instead is fair to debtors and does not rob them. He gives food to the hungry and provides clothes for the needy. He helps the poor, does not lend money at interest, and obeys all my regulations and decrees. Such a person will not die because of his father's sins. He will surely live. But the father will die for his many sins, for being cruel, robbing people, and doing what was clearly wrong among his people. Verse 19, what do you ask? It says, what you ask? I'm sorry. Verse 19, what you ask? Doesn't the child pay for the parent's sins? There it is. No, for if the child does what is just and right and keeps my decrees, that child will surely live. The person who sins is the one who will die. The child will not be punished for the parent's sins. And the parent will not be punished for the child's sins. Righteous people will be rewarded for their own righteous behavior. And wicked people will be punished for their own wickedness. But if wicked people turn away from all their sins and begin to obey my decrees and do what is just and right, they will surely live and not die. All their past sins will be forgotten and they will live because of the righteous things they have done. Now, it's very important here to note that these we are talking about wicked repenting and becoming believers. Why do I say that? OK, so say if you're wicked, OK, you're a wicked, you're a rebellious person. You've been doing all these things. You're not a believer. Just say you're just wicked and you're doing all these things. OK, and, and uh, you, you straighten up your life because that happens a lot. That happens a lot. You know, p people, people all the time, people all the time. They change their lives. They get better. You know, they, they, they start doing right. Uh, they start, you know, uh, helping and, and just doing everything correct. 
and they and they shape up in other words okay but they're not believers okay it goes well for that person of course of course it goes well for that person they change their lives around okay but they're like i said in other videos they don't believe in god but they're they're good people they, they turned their life around they used to be a certain way and now they're not okay good but this right here what is it talking about it talks about right here it says but if wicked people turn away from all their sins and begin to obey my decrees there it is believers becoming a believer obeying his decrees obeying his laws believing in him first of all how can you obey his decrees and not believe in him if you don't believe in him then you don't wouldn't know what his decrees are amen so i, I wanted to point that out because there's a lot of people who do right and and, and but they don't they don't believe in god and then we're going to get into that right now. We're going to they're going we're going to get a little more into that, a little more detail on this right now, okay? So bear with me. Verse 22, all their past sins will be forgotten and they will live because of the righteous things they have done. Once again, but if the wicked people turn away, repent from all their sins and begin to obey his decrees and do what is just and right, they will surely live and not die. All their past sins will be forgotten. Now, where it says surely live and not die, he's talking about when you die. When you die, you live, okay? In other words, your salvation. You will live. Even though you die, your body goes back to the ground. You will live. You will live where he is, okay? You will go to heaven, okay? This is spiritual death, okay? Spiritual death. Okay, it's not talking about physical because why not? Why not? Okay, so because it makes sense, right? It says doesn't blatantly say it right here, but it says they will surely live and not die. Now, if this were to be the physical body, okay, then we will be we would have living people from thousands of years ago. <laughs> Get it? This is spiritual death. Okay, spiritual death. Okay, because like I said, if this is talking about your physical body, <laughs> we would have people still living from the time this was written. Okay, so we know it's not that. It's spiritual death. Okay, so let's just get that clear. Okay, so it says, uh, decrees and do what is just, they will surely live and not die. All their past sins will be forgotten. Uh, there it is there. Way back in Ezekiel. What is that? What is that? It says that when the Lord died for us and we believe in him, what happens? All our sins are washed away. Amen. We got the gospel going on right here in the book of Ezekiel. Do you see it? It says all their sins as if they, if they repent. I'm going to break this down into layman's terms. If wicked people repent. Okay, of their sins, they repent, they change their ways and believe in the Lord. We went through that and obey his decrees and do what is just and right. They will surely live when they die. They will surely live and go to heaven. Okay, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but this is what it's saying here. All their past sins will be forgotten. They'll be washed away. Uh, he will forget them. As far as the east is from the west, he will not remember your sins no more. Correct? There's a description in the New Testament. It speaks about it right here in Ezekiel. All their past sins will be forgotten. He will not remember them no more. And they will live because of the righteous things they have done. Amen? Because they will be right standing with God. They repented. So important. Repent. Do you think that I like? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Now, my life applies to this. Okay, my life applies to this. I used to be wicked, man. Wicked. Wicked. I didn't want to go into details how wicked I was. Okay. Maybe someday I'll give you an in-depth uh, um, an in-depth, uh, what do you call it, uh, um, 
I know I, I have a testimony, okay? I give my testimony, I give it, and it's on my channel. You can look for it. But maybe I'll go into in depth. Maybe I won't, though, because I don't like uh, reciting uh, the wicked things I used to do. Wicked, okay? So I repented. So this is talking about me, you know? So I could, I could be a living, I'm a living testimony unto God. Okay, because I repented, I turned towards God, I believe in God, I believed in Jesus, I repented of my sins, okay, and now he's, he's confirming, and this is why I love the Word of God, and I was telling you, I love this chapter because it just confirmed, it confirmed what I was personally, and I don't know what your life is, I don't know what your walk was, but I know we're all, we're all sinners, okay? From the day we are born, we're, we're born estranged from God, separated from God, okay? But there's ones that were more wicked than others, okay? And I was one of them, and there's probably much more. There, there is a lot that are wicked, okay? But they repent, they turn towards the Lord, okay? And this is the beauty of it. It says it right here. He forgets all your sins. He remembers them no more. He washes you. Okay? This is, this is awesome right here. It says, All their past sins will be forgotten. That confirmed in me, and I said, Thank you, Lord, when I read this. I already knew it. But I said, Thank you, Lord, again, because it makes me start thinking about it. How good the Lord is. How good He is to us. He's faithful and true. Amen. Verse 23. Do you think that I like to see wicked people die? Here we go. Here we go right here. Do you think that I like that the Lord is saying this is God saying this. And so if you say, well, man, you're saying that, that God will send me to hell. And if I don't, you know, believe in him and, you know, he gives you an option. He gives you a way out. And he doesn't want to see you die. If you're wicked and you're rebelling, and it, this is to those who are, are, are rebelling. This is to you. This is to you. Okay. Whoever's watching this. Whoever's listening to this, this is for you. If, you're, if you are doing wicked things and you're rebelling, most likely you're not watching this. But I, I, maybe, maybe there's somebody that could share this with another person in their life. Somebody who's rebellious. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's a teenager. Maybe it's whatever. Maybe it's a husband even. Maybe it's, it's, it's your, your son or daughter and you're older and your son or daughter's older and he's wicked. He's rebellious. And he doesn't believe in God. Well, show them this. Show them this. Show them this video. Just fast forward it to this part. Fast forward it to this part. You have a chance. You can repent. You can turn away from all those things. I did. I did. The Lord loves you, and I'm speaking to you. Whoever, if this is shown to a person like this, there is nothing you have done that I don't know about, that I probably haven't done myself. I'm a living testimony that there is a chance for you, that it can happen. That the power of the Lord can break those chains. I'm not just speaking out of my neck. I lived a lifestyle that most people wouldn't even recognize me if they knew me at that point in time. Sometimes I don't show. I wear shirts, these t-shirts. But for the most part, I don't show uh, uh, when I wear tank tops and stuff. And it's not that I'm ashamed of it. But I lived a wicked life for a long time. A long time. And the Lord has kept me around. I should have been dead long ago. Long ago. 
but he kept me around for a reason. And this, now I know this is the reason. And I know if you're watching this, you're saying, nah, nah, there's another guy preaching God and preaching. Well, it's the truth, man. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. You could stop living that life. There's nothing wrong. You could turn from those sins. You could repent. I wear these. I have all this. Someday, someday, I mean, there's still hope for you. My hope was gone. My hope was gone. I was deep in it, deep in it, deep in it. The enemy pushed me to the point of because he's a liar. The devil is a liar. And he wants you to go to that extreme. Even to die. That, that, that's what he would hope for. But the Lord loved me too much. And here I sit telling you. We have a savior. You have a savior that loves you very much. This is to that lost person. There's hope, man. Stop those ways. Stop while you're ahead. Stop while you're ahead. Change your ways. If you need prayer, reach out to me. If you want to talk, reach out to me, man. Anything. Anything that you're going through, it, it's not going to surprise me. And we'll pray. I'll help you with as much as I can. There's hope. There's hope in Jesus. There's hope. Amen. Do you think that I like to see the wicked people die? The Lord's saying no. No. He doesn't like seeing wicked people die. It doesn't please him. Says the sovereign Lord, of course not. Once again, do you think I like to see wicked people die? Says the sovereign Lord, of course not. I want them to turn from their wicked ways and live. However, if righteous people turn from their righteous behavior and start doing sinful things and act like other sinners, should they be allowed to live? No, of course not. All their righteous acts will be forgotten and they will die for their sins. Remember, we're not only talking about wicked people now. We're talking about righteous people. Righteous. Right standing with God. Backsliding. Falling away from the faith. Apostasy. Falling into sin. If this is you, and you're watching this, and you have slid, and if you're sinning again, and you have fallen back into sin, or you're falling into sin, remember these words here. And if you die in those sins, it says right here, however, if righteous people turn from their righteous behavior, and start doing sinful things and act like other sinners, should they be allowed to live? No, of course not. 
All their righteous acts will be forgotten and they will die for their sins. Very important. So if that has happened to you and this is, and this is speaking to you, then repent. Turn back and turn back to the Lord. Repent and turn back to the Lord. I could go on in my testimony how I slipped so many times back into the world. It didn't go well with me every single time. It didn't go well with me. And every time it was a little bit more extreme, a little bit more spiritual spanking by my Father in heaven. So if you're one of them, if you slid and you're a backslider and you're watching this, if somebody knows that there's a backslider in their life, show them this. Show them me, show them me talking right now. It's not going to go well with you. And why do I say that? Because the Lord will go after you. He will allow you to go through things. He'll give you up to your, to, to your want. He'll give you up to that if you want to. Whatever you're doing, he'll give you up to it. And it won't go well. And each time it'll get worse. I'm telling you because I lived it. So to, this is to that backslider. If someone's showing you this, maybe somebody that, that, that knows, that watches me and say, hey, check this out. Check that out this guy, David. Check out this guy, David. He has a powerful testimony. Well, hey, I'm telling you, this is to you, you backslider. Get back. Come back, man. Come back, woman, whoever it is. Come back. Come back. The Lord will forgive you. Get back on the right track. Don't let him keep coming. He'll give you little, little signs like this one. Like me telling you right now. If this is being shown to a backslider from somebody, he'll show you a sign right now. And this is the sign. Me telling you, come back. That's what he's saying. Come back. He's saying he loves you. Come back. If you're wandered off, if you're that sheep that has wandered off, he's saying, come back. And if you refuse this and you just keep going in your ways, then he's going to give you a, 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 something. He's going to allow something to happen to draw you back. A, something a little more harder, a little more shaking to bring you back. Believe me, I know I went through it. Because if you die in your sins, whatever you've done, it says right here, all their righteous acts will be forgotten. Come back. Come back. And they will die for their sins. Whew. When you have time, go over this again. Go over this chapter. Meditate on it. Verse 25, yet you say the Lord isn't doing what's right. Listen to me, O people of Israel. They said it's not fair. He's not doing, it's not, he's not doing what is right. They were saying it's, he, he's not fair. It says the Lord isn't doing what's right. Listen to me, O people of Israel. Am I the one not doing what's right? Or is it you? When righteous people turn from their righteous behavior and start doing sinful things, they will die for it. Yes, they will die because of their sinful deeds. And if wicked people turn from their wickedness, obey the law, and do what is just and right, they will save their lives. They will live because they thought it over and decided to turn from their sins. Such people will not die. And yet the people of Israel keep saying, the Lord isn't doing what's right. Oh, people of Israel, it is you who are not doing what is right, not I. Therefore, I will judge each of you, O oh, people of Israel, according to your actions, says the Sovereign Lord. Repent and turn from your sins. 
Don't let them destroy you. Put all your rebellion behind you. And find yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Born again. For why should you die, O people of Israel? I don't want you to die, says the Sovereign Lord. Turn back and live. Repent. We can apply this to today. And if you're saying, David, David, you're talking about the people of Israel. Not us. Then you better go back to your Bible. You better start reading where it says that we've been grafted in as Gentiles. Who is a Gentile? Who is a Gentile? Anyone that's not Jewish is a Gentile. Whatever race you are. Anybody who's not Jewish, you're a foreigner, you're a Gentile. Same thing. And when you become a believer, you are grafted in. You become a believer in Messiah, in Yeshua, in Jesus Christ. So you've been grafted into the commonwealth. You've been grafted into the vine. Who is the vine? Jesus. So when you say, David, he's talking to the people of Israel here. Really? He's not talking to us believers? We're separate? Who's talking right here? Who's talking? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all in one, King of the universe. This is Him. This is Him. So if this is Him, this is Yeshua, Yehovah, Yahweh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Ruach Kodesh, then who's speaking here? Not, it's not it's not somebody separate oh this is not this is not Yeshua this is this is God this is not Yeshua come on hello this is him and this applies to us as believers so if you want to say oh no that, that he's talking about the people of Israel we've been grafted in this applies to us today this applies to us Once again, it says, therefore, I will judge each of you, O people of Israel, according to your actions, says the sovereign Lord. Repent and turn from your sins. Don't let them destroy you. Put all your rebellion behind you and find yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For they should, for why should you die, O people of Israel? I don't want you to die, says the sovereign Lord. Turn back and live. Amen. Amen. So many good, good things in here. I mean, good points. I, I recommend you go through this chapter um, again and on your own time. Uh, so many things to uh, to learn from this. Um, you know, I know there's probably those that watch and that know about these these uh, scriptures already, and and uh, hopefully there's 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 been those who follow who are following along with me. Um, but, uh, I just, I just want to thank you for following along. Um, but many things in this, in this, uh, chapter and all these chapters, all these chapters, you know, it's just so, so very important. All of this, all of, all of, all of, uh, what he's speaking through the prophets, especially in these times, you know, um, especially in these times that we're living in. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's sometimes it just, it's blowing my mind. It, it is, it actually is blowing my mind, you know, about events that are going on in the world. And, and, uh, and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that the Lord gave me a chance that I, that I've come to repentance in my life. I am so, so very happy 
and joyful because I could have died in my sins, you know, and, and, and uh, wow, you know, I, when I got saved and I was delivered and it was still to today, if I start thinking about it, right, really meditating on it, you know, the Lord, he gave me another chance and chance and chance and chance. And, and it is so important, so important. I just, I just wanted to, to tell you that, you know, and, um, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful that I could be speaking to you, to anybody who watches or listens. I'm so grateful, you know, and maybe someday I'll give you a more powerful testimony. Like I said, there's one on my channel, but it's, it's, it's just brief. That's just brief. You know, there's details, there's details, you know, that, that I haven't mentioned, you know, um, Maybe I don't have to mention those things because those things are in the past. But just know this, know this, that we have a good, good father. And if you're struggling with anything, just continue to, to pray to him. If you're struggling with a certain sin or something that's in your life and you just can't seem to shake it, don't give in to it. Just, just continue, continue to pray for the Lord to deliver you from it. And he will. He will. I promise you that. Don't give up. Amen. Uh, well, as you see today, mm, I just want to let you know because it, it's amazing at the same time that on certain teachings, certain videos, you know, it, it's evident to me. I just want you to see it too, though. It's evident to me. Evident. Because my mind is like a little distraught right now. And, and, uh, and it's, it's a good, good, uh, it was a good uh, hour, a good chapter. A lot of good things in that chapter, but it was, it was just, uh, when the Lord picks me up and he starts, starts speaking through me, I mean, I could tell because I, when I finish, I'm like, woof. And I start, sometimes I even weep, but sometimes it's just, it's plain, you know, it's plain. It's still awesome. I'm not saying that, but, uh, this is one of those times when it's just, it was just, uh, uh, it was plain, but it was awesome. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But, uh, it's just amazing how the spirit works. Okay, sometimes you just lift me up and just shoom, I go. <laughs> and sometimes it's just, it's, it's all good, though. It's all good. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say, okay? I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for joining me once again. Thank you so much. I love you so much, all of you. I, I love you so much. And um, whoever's watching this, and, and uh, show it. Show it to an unbeliever or somebody who's rebelling show it you know if they want need any questions that you want me to pray for them send me prayer requests you know i'll pray for your for your uh for anybody who's going through a lifestyle like that maybe they've they've come from a lifestyle the same as mine uh rebellious you know um i'll pray for them and uh and uh, yeah okay so uh please join me again tomorrow as we're going to bring you another eclipse picture they're all they're all awesome, uh, just amazing. Uh, the Lord's work is amazing in His creation, uh, just amazing. We have an um, amazing Creator, amazing Lord, Amen. So thank you once again. Please join me back tomorrow as we do another hour, another uh, hour in, in God's Word, uh, going through the major and minor prophets. Thank you for coming along on this adventure with me. Uh, I hope it's been a blessing to you. Okay, so thank you very much. We'll get through this. Amen. One day at a time. Praise the Lord.